Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Christ. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And now, Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And I... Uh, it would be remiss of me to go into my little sermon this evening without acknowledging this group here. Or this is family members and such, and they've traveled. Some have traveled from afar. Is that? They are all from Minnesota. And North Dakota. And North Dakota. Be represented now. Okay, Minnesota and North Dakota. Let's let's give them a hand for being here. And I pray that you have safe travel and return home. It's such a blessing to have you here, but wow, great. Okay. All righty, so here it is, Christmas Eve 2023. And as we are at the culmination of this season of Advent, we are engulfed in a season of giving, gift giving. And we might as well face it, Regardless of the sacred reality that Jesus is the reason for the season, gift giving has been more of what Christmas is about in the hearts and minds of many of us. Even us good Jesus loving Christians, we love exchanging gifts at Christmas time. And it doesn't matter how young or old we are. The heart tends to be warmed by a special gift or gifts at Christmas time. From the light-hearted perspective of a child, it's been expressed, all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. How about that? Yes. And then from a lover's perspective, as expressed in Mariah Carey's overplayed song at Christmas time, all I want for Christmas is you, and so on and so on. Yes, this season marks a time in which we are just in the habit of either being the giver of as well as the recipient of some type of gift. And yes, there is a joy in receiving as well as giving gifts, presents. A gift coming in any form, big or small, warms the heart. However, knowing that celebrating Christmas should not be all about receiving and giving gifts, 
I'll be the first to admit that I get caught up in the frenzy. I have given some thought to what might have been the best gift I've ever received in my whole life, not just at Christmas, but any other time in my life. And I thought, where do I begin? Was it the flawless diamond ring that I once received from a fiance? Or crisp new $100 bills received in a greeting card? Now, while these are certainly among a list of great gifts that I've received in my lifetime, surely they cannot be the best gift that I've ever received. So if you will, I'm going to invite you in uh, to take this journey with me. Take a minute and think about it, and you can't think too long, or else you won't hear what i got to say in the rest of the sermon here, the rest of the message. What would you say is the best gift? that you've ever received, young and old. And if you can't come up with it now, think about it later after you're done here. But just think about what would you just say to someone, you know the best gift I've ever received is such and such. And I know several of the regular attendees may recall me presenting this here in this place before. But how many of us would be willing to say that it was not necessarily a tangible gift, tangible meaning for the kids, something that you can hold and play with and shake and whatever, touch. That may not have been the best gift that any of us have ever received. But how many of us would be willing to say that the greatest gift was not the tangible gift, you know, like a brand new car or a truck or a set of golf clubs or jewelry or a new wardrobe of clothes, toys, and things. Think about it. If not something tangible, what would it be? Perhaps the gift of life itself the activity of your minds, the activity of your limbs, would we dare to say earnestly that the best gift we've ever received is God's love and saving grace as referenced in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, eternal life. Well, what do you know? What an awesome gift that is. This, my friends, is really what Christmas is all about. And every year at this time, I'll stand and I'll usually, I'll read the, the lessons and then I'll go through what the lessons have already told us, the lessons we've heard about old little town of Bethlehem and the baby lying in the manger and Mary pondering in her heart and the angels and the shepherds. But this year, I thought I'd talk about the greatest gift. Nevertheless, when it comes down to it, here at Christmas time, we cannot help but to get caught up in the frenzy of exchanging gifts. And yes, we tend to favor receiving tangible ones, like I said earlier, the bigger the better. So here's another question for you. What is the best gift you've ever given someone in your gift giving? What is the best gift? You know it was your best that you gave them. Several of you may have seen the movie of O. Henry's classic tale, The Gift of the Magi. Anybody familiar with that, The Gift of the Magi? It's a story about this young married couple, Jim and Della, who were struggling financially. As Christmas approaches, they want to give special gifts to each other. But their lack of money drives them to drastic measures. Jim's prized possession is a gold watch, while Della's is her long hair, long, beautiful hair. And so Jim sells his watch, 
in order to buy combs for Della's long, beautiful hair, while Della goes and cuts her hair and sells it to buy a chain for Jim's watch. Are you all familiar with that story? Some of you may not be, if this is your first time hearing it. It's such a heartwarming story about gift giving. And I read, noted in a devotional that this story reminds us that sacrifice is at the heart of true love. And sacrifice is love's truest measure. This idea is particularly appropriate for Christmas because sacrifice is the heartbeat of the story of the birth of Christ. Jesus Christ was born to die, and he was born to die for each of us. It is God's gift to each of us which is the greatest of all gifts that any one of us could ever possibly receive. It is the gift that long time ago on that blessed holy night, Mary wrapped in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger. It is the gift of which the angels sang and the shepherds made haste to go and behold and then spread the good news. It was such a fragile gift in the form of a baby boy, a boy child named Jesus, so named for he would save his people from their sins. Now, while listening to one of my favorite Christmas CDs, and it's by gospel artist um, Fred Hammond, I was struck by the words in one of the songs in which the baby Jesus is referenced by his tiny hand and his tiny feet. And the words which caught my attention were in reference to the baby Jesus' tiny, fragile heart pumping blood to save us. How poetic is that? Isn't that something? His tiny, fragile heart pumping blood to save us. Wow, and I thought, how deep. Do we dare take that for granted? It brings us face to face with the reality that Jesus Christ was born to die for us, to live from the cradle to the cross. What a sacrificial gift from God, all because God in Christ loves each of us. It is a gift that keeps on giving. My sisters and brothers, is this not the, not the greatest gift, but the bestest gift? And if the teachers here would say, that's not a word, the bestest gift that anyone could ever see, receive, that you or I could ever receive. And here I'm reminded of the words of another gospel song, a Christmas song by Kirk Franklin. And he says, the greatest gift for me is not under a tree. For the greatest gift is love, God's love. And something rather fascinating I also ran across in devotions is regarding receiving, when we receive gifts of apparel, clothes, things that we can wear. When we receive it as a gift and it's labeled one size fits all, that message is a reminder of the best gift of Christmas. The good news that Jesus is for everyone. One size fits all. The point was proven when the first invitation sent by the angelic choir was to shepherds on the bottom rung of the social ladder. Shepherds were smelly, you know, people that nobody wanted to be around. They were low status. But yet the angel, the angelic choir first saying to the shepherds that Jesus Christ was born. Christ is for everyone, regardless of status, financial situations, race, age, or social standing. 
Christ is the only gift truly fit for us all. God's gift to a dying world is the life-given Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, whereas you have followed along with me on this track of gift given here and the questions that I presented before you here at Christmas time, as I have raised the questions, what is the best gift that you have ever received and what is the best gift that you have ever given? On that note, I'd like to share a special gift that I received from a dear parishioner several Christmases ago. And I will not say her name. She and God know who she is. And yes, I've done this before here another time on Christmas. But you see, I get excited over gift wrappings. I love bows and fancy wrap presents. I don't almost like whatever's in it may be okay, but it's the gift wrapping that gets me all excited. Beautifully wrapped gifts. And so that year I find this, this beautiful box sitting on the table in, my, in the pastor's office. And I picked it up. And yes, to my surprise, it was empty. There's nothing in this box. I'm excited over its look. I suppose I would have been very disappointed that there was no tangible present inside it. I know as a kid I'd be crying, oh, where's my gift? Where's my toy? But there was, this, there was this tag attached to it. And I read the tag, and I'm going to read it for you now. It says, this, and I can't see it here, so it reads, the Christmas present. This is the Christmas present, a special present meant to be placed beneath the tree. Nestle among the other gifts. It is our present for the infant king. A royal box meant to be seen and meant to be pondered as Christmas Day approaches. For it is the gift of ourselves. A completely empty gift devoid of anything good, anything pleasing, anything at all to give a newborn king. And yet, it is the very gift he came to receive. For he who gave everything came to those who gave nothing that they could receive everything. And he could receive them. This is what's written on this box. Are we willing to say that the best gift we have ever given is the gift of ourselves, our hearts to Christ? You know, like the song, you know the song, The Little Drummer Boy? It's not scriptural, but it lifts up the idea of giving back to God what God has given us, our talents and gifts and worship and giving and benevolence. The little drummer boy had no fine gifts to bring, but he gave what he had, his talents. He played his drum saying, I played my best for him for rump a pum pum And playing his drum was the best gift that he could give the king. So when we give ourselves as gifts to God, we give our all, our time and talents, as Christ has given his all for us. God gave us the best gift, and so we give back what God has given to us. So lastly, in closing, and finally I'm going to close. In the spirit of celebrating the birth of Jesus, our thanks and praise are somewhat happy birthday, Jesus wishes. As we have received God's best gift, Hear the sentiments of the hymnist who penned these words. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. And so let us, like the shepherds, spread the good news that a Savior is born. And let us glorify and praise God, joining in with the angelic host and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. 
goodwill toward men. Dear Lord, let it be so. Amen. Amen. To each of you and your families, have a merry and blessed Christmas. <laughs>